Hey Joe, how you doing? Hi Herbert, how are you? I'm doing great. Very good. How are your legs feeling? Yeah, pretty good actually. Um, yeah, it's what five days since Wildflower, and um, yeah, I feel all right. I sort of uh, yeah, I was happy with my race, but uh, yeah, I had no one sort of chasing me down, and I couldn't catch Leon, so I didn't have to run that last mile down to the finish flat out. So I think my legs have been okay, so it's good. Um, you. You said you're happy with third. Um, were you surprised uh, who was ahead or not, or you were you mostly talking about your time? Um, times were a little bit irrelevant this year, just because it was the first year they had a non wetsuit swim, so it was very very slow. Um, yeah, it's I probably adds a couple of minutes, but. With who I was racing, no, there was no surprises. Um, I know Leon was in amazing shape for Melbourne, and same with the race I had. He didn't race as well as he'd hoped. So I knew he'd done an amazing off-season to get ready for Melbourne, and it hadn't worked out. So he was hungry for a good race. And Jesse's the form athlete at the moment. He nearly beat Potts at Oceanside, and always won Wildflower three times now, and he loves that race. And he had his whole family and support crew come down for it, um, so he knew. I knew that he'd be hard to beat because he wanted it so bad. So third for me was really good um, after a string of sort of bad, a couple of DNFs in Ironman, and then I, I punctured it in Auckland. So I didn't finish um, in the top there either. So it was finally good um, to get a, a third back on the podium. So. It's good to start the US season a little bit better. No, it's, I guess it's good for your confidence. Uh, Melbourne didn't go as planned. No, no. Um, I did the best preparation I've ever done for an Ironman. Um, four months of really good, consistent training, no problems, no injuries, no sickness. And, um, yeah, just racing Craig Alexander and Marino and, um, and Eco. They're just a whole, a whole different level at that Ironman distance. They race it like it's a seventy point three, and then basically back end it, and they just they can go so hard and then still carry on at a really good pace. Whereas the younger guys, um, so in that race, for instance, like Leon and Tim Burkle and guys that do well over seventy point three, um, just got shelled out the back really, and that was a big surprise um, to see how hard they race these Ironmans now it's 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 like what 70.3 was five years ago but they do it for the whole thing so I learn a lot and I uh, have to go back and think a little bit more and maybe race an Ironman more at my level which maybe means doing like a an Arizona or a Tahoe or a Coeur d'Alene or something like that maybe not those big um like Hawaii or your Germany or your Melbournes, um, just, just yet. <laughs> See, it's very live. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Dogs are part of our lives, you know? Very yes. Important. It was the postman. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, um, yeah, looking ahead, I, I love 70.3 and um, it basically that's my focus now for the rest of the year and – try and chalk up a few wins like I did last year and, and then hit Vegas with everything. Uh, that's I think that's my best shot at winning a world championship is over the half Ironman distance at the moment. Uh, let's just talk about Melbourne one more time. When, yeah. when do you think the wheels kind of came off? or when, At what part of the race did you think this is not this is not what I imagined? Um, sort of maybe halfway through the bike ride. I was pretty much holding the intensity, intensity that I hold for a 70.3. And I just started to break down. Like my, I started getting niggles in my hip and my, my glute and my hamstring. And, and um, yeah, it's just I just don't have that strength yet, I don't think, um, to back end the race. Like it, it was crazy. They, they ride so hard for that first 90 kilometres. And then they actually don't, they, just, they slow down and slow down a lot in Melbourne in the second lap, but not – they still held their, their body still held up and they were still able to get off and run well and um, be strong. And that, I think that comes with age. Like the average age in the top five in Melbourne was um, like 37, I think, something like that. Yeah, I've just turned 31, so I'm giving myself plenty of time. I haven't discounted Ironman or 
or Kona, I still, it's my dream to, to win Ironman um, Kona one day. And I think I can. It's just, um, it just takes, it's going to take a few more years. And a lot of people will come to that conclusion. It just takes time. So Unless you're Craig Alexander. So <laughs> I guess it's safe to say that Kona this year is not on the cards. You're going to do more 70.3 races. Yeah, um, because Melbourne didn't go according to plan, um, I don't have the points, and I'm not going to go and chase another big Ironman in the middle of my 70.3 season, um, because really 70.3 is my best distance, and I'm more competitive over that distance anyway. So I'll look at doing my 70.3 season up until Vegas, and then maybe putting, if I feel still feel healthy and um, motivated, um, then I'll race an Ironman at the end of the year um, in preparation for the points for Kona 2014. Um, so along those lines, what is what is the next event that's on your calendar? So Rev3 Quasi in uh, three and a half weeks. Um, it's my next one, and that's going to be a pretty crazy field. Um, good money got, race, right? Yeah, it's a good money race. The money has come down a little bit, but it's still, it's, it's still a very, very good purse, and it pays deep, and... But yeah, like the, there's some interesting names on the start list this year, like guys like Tim Don, who's just moved over to the 70.3 distance. Um, Richie Cunningham, my training partner, is coming back and he's just won some Croix, so he'll be hard to beat. Uh, Jesse's coming back and he's in great form. Uh, and then I think there's, people, there's talk of like people like Bevan Doherty racing and even Simon Whitfield. So yeah, you've got a, a real mi mixed bag there and uh, it's it's an amazing course and I, I love I'm looking forward to taking on these new guys to the 70.3 distance on a real challenging course like Rev3, Quasi. Hopefully um, the weather will be a little bit kinder than the one in Knoxville. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it looked pretty brutal out there. Um, yeah, they had some strange conditions in the whole weekend of racing, really. I know St. Croix got some crazy weather and Wildflower, was, that was the hottest I've ever done it and that was my sixth time I've been to Wildflower and that was pretty hot on the run. We had 90, nearly 100 um, degree days leading into the race and it got up to about 90 race days so yeah so it's all good. if you had if you obviously you cannot choose the weather but could you would you have rather had temps in the 50s and right hard rain or hot probably i handle the cold pretty well um i've uh i've got english blood and uh i grew, grew up in tasmania which in winter gets pretty cold so I don't mind the cold at all. And my my first big win was actually at European Champs in Gerardmer in France. And that was pretty much seven hours of racing in the pouring rain. So uh, maybe that does suit me. But you've got to prepare for everything. So the big races are Hawaii and Vegas and they're hot. So you've got to make sure you can handle that as well. Um, and, then after, and then after Rev 3, what's going to be next after that one? After Rev, I'll go back and try and defend my title at Syracuse. Uh, the... Yeah, in the end of June, and then yeah, and then Monte Boulder Peak. It's on my doorstep, um, and it's a great race. It's a it's a really challenging bike course there, so I'll do that, and then hopefully uh, go and uh, have a good go at Vine Man. Uh, I've got a first, a second, and a third there, so I'd like to go back, get back on the the winners, in the winner spot. Well, we hope it's not a four. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> But you can only do what you can do. It depends who's racing, really. Um, yeah, Jesse's talking about racing that one, and Greg Bennett probably will go back and try and defend. And but uh, yeah, it's Fireman always attracts a, an amazing field, and I love that place. It's an amazing course, and yeah, it's yeah, it was my first big seventy point three win uh, in back in two thousand and nine. So I'll keep going back. I love it. Excellent. Um, yeah. Well, we heard your dog earlier. I guess he doesn't <laughs> like the mailman. No, apparently not. <laughs> so, who's faster, the dog or the mailman? Um, probably the mailman at the moment. He's got a bit of a sore shoulder, so... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting it looked at. Because maybe we could find out. Yeah. Yeah, we could find that out. <laughs> um, but everything else is well with you? Yeah, really good. It's yeah, I'm settled back in Boulder. Um, yeah, I have... Uh, house here now and it's just yeah it's an amazing place and I feel really settled and yeah I spend more time here than I do back in Australia so yeah it's 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 fantastic. Um, I guess that's also where most of your sponsors are based. Yeah um, yeah I only have one um, Australian sponsor and yeah predominantly my sponsors are American based and 
yeah, it's Boulder's a mecca for endurance athletes. There's a reason why everyone floods to Boulder to to train, and it's yeah, it's, it's great. You can have a really good training as well as you can have great eating and socialising if you want to get away from the sports. So it's a nice, it's a nice balance. That's important, I think. It is it's important for me just to keep my head screwed on and not get too um, caught up in just being a triathlete. It's uh, there's more things more to things than uh, just triathlon in your life. So what's what's your favorite hangout? In Boulder. In Boulder. Um, like, how about restaurant? Rest- let's say a restaurant. Uh, there's, well, it's not that new now. The pizzeria locale um, is, is um, yeah, authentic Italian pizza place I frequent. Um, and then coffee place up in Spruce. There's a place up in North Boulder, which we start, Richie and I start pretty much all our rides there and sometimes finish there as well. So, yeah, there's a few places we are. Uh, we see a lot of, but yeah, there's so much choice. It's yeah. actually, it's a hard decision where to go actually in Boulder because the restaurants are so good. That's excellent. Yeah. Well, listen, we let you run again. Um, good luck at Red 3 Quasi. Thank you. And good luck for the rest of the season. And we'll hopefully see you in Las Vegas. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's my big A race. So hopefully I can uh, get on the podium there this year. All right. Be good. Great. Thanks, Herbert.